I am Shaju Bendran, B.Tech graduate from NSS College of Engineering, Palakka. I have been in this field as a faculty for the past 19 years. I taught more than 2000 students individually as well as group and I am associating with Urban Pro for the last two years. Today, we are going to learn computer architecture and organization. The topics covered will be basic operation of a computer, memory addressing and languages, instruction set architecture, instruction format and addressing boards. Let us see one by one, basic operation of a computer. We all know the functional blocks of computer system are, one, the central processing unit, two, the memory, three, input unit, for example, what are the input units? That is uh, keyboard, mouse, etc. Comes a bus, uh, I mean, the jogs, joysticks, camera, etc. are input units. Then what are the output units? Printer, plotter, LCD, LED screen, speaker, bus, uh, projector, projection system, etc. are come as, as the output unit. The central processing unit, that's a functional unit. That, that's one of the functional units. That consists of control unit and arithmetic logic units. Uh, not units, unit. All calculations happen inside the ALU or arithmetic logic unit. The control unit generate sequence of control signals. Control signals are generated by control unit to carry out all operations. What do you mean by that? Suppose we want to add two numbers. If we want to add two num numbers, the instruction is kept inside the memory, what, whatever the commands we are giving to computer are loaded into the memory. And from memory, the CPU is fetching each and every instruction. So to fetch a single instruction, say we want to the instruction is add R1, R2, where R1 and R2 are registers with, which is lying inside the CP. So this R1, let it contains, it contains a 0, 5. Let R2 contain 0, 2. Then once we execute the instruction add R1, R2, the result will be Executed. The, the execution is done by the processor and uh, the memory contains the instruction. So the processor has to initiate the, uh, the execution. So it will send the address to memory. Address means each and every house has, heard, has got an address like that. Each and every memory location has got an address. Microprocessor or CPU sent this address to memory. And along with that, it will send a read signal so that the memory could release the instruction from, from it. So the instruction reach CPU and the CPU executes it. So when this instruction reaches there, what happens is the 
CPU goes for a sequence of operations to carry each and every instruction. To carry out each and every instruction, it has to do many operations inside the CPU. They are called micro operations. So for doing this micro operations, control unit has to generate a sequence of actions. That is called the sequence of operations. That is what is written. The control unit generates sequence of control signals to carry out all operations. All operations means here add R1 comma R2. So, what are the operations now required that we will see? That, that's what is written here. The processor fetches an instruction from memory for execution, as I have discussed. An instruction specifies exact operation to be carried out. Here, what is the operation? Add, addition is the operation. And the R1 and R2 is the operands. That means that is the registers. Registers mean that is inside the processor and it is similar to memory. It can hold data. It also specifies the data that are to be operated on. That the data are what 0, 5 and 0, 2. And that is the operand. That is the R1 and R2 here. A program refers to instructions that are required to carry out specific tasks. What is program now? Program means a sequence of instruction. Add R1, R2 is a particular instruction. Like that we are writing many instructions and they are loaded into memory. So the sequence of instructions written are called a program. Now let us see what is the role of ALU. As I have already discussed, the ALU is inside the CPU and it executes the instruction. It, it contains AL, um, CPU contains ALU and the central process, I mean, uh, the control unit. Let us say what is the role of ALU. It contains several registers. We have already discussed R1 and R2 are two registers. Registers are used to hold data for Temporary storage of data. For long, it is not holding it. For temporary storage of data, the 0, 5, and 0, 2 are held in the uh, registers. Temporarily, it is holding that. So, it contains several registers, some general purpose and some special purpose for temporary storage of data. So, during instruction execution, the data operands are brought in and stored in some registers. That means, I already discussed there is a memory. In memory, I told that uh, the instruction is uh, loaded into the memory. But not only the instruction, the data can also be loaded into the memory. For example, here, we, uh, I, I told that R1 and R2 are holding what uh, the data, 0, 5, and 0, 2 are held in the R1 and R2. Before the procedure, we have to bring the data, 0, 5, and 0, 2, from memory to R1 and R2. So that's what is written. The data are to be brought from memory to registers and the result are stored back in some register add r1 comma r2 makes add the contents of r1 and r2 and the result is to be stored back in r1 that's what is written there the role of control unit to carry out specific operation here what is the operation add r1 comma r2 the control unit must generate control signals in a specific sequence. What are the sequence? In brief, the control unit has to 
enable register R1 and register R2. So the contents are coming to arithmetic logic unit. And the arithmetic logic unit, the adder is to be enabled. Then the addition will happen and the result goes back to R1. So to carry out specific question, that's what is written here. To carry out a specific operation, say R1, R2 plus R2, R2 plus R2, the contents of R2 plus R, R2 plus R2 goes back to R1. The control unit must generate control signals in a specific sequence. That what are the sequence? Enable the output of registers R2 and R3. I have previously I told R1 and R2, R2 or R3, any register. So enable the output of R2 and R3. Select addition operation. What happens when R2 and R3 are enabled? They will be enabled and they will be in the bus. Bus I will discuss later. But they anyway that has reached in the ALU. So in the ALU, arithmetic logic unit, we have add, subtract, multiplier, divide, logic operations like and, or, not, etc. are shift, etc. are in the ALU. So in the, from in, in the ALU, we have to select adder only. Then only the addition will happen. So that's why it is written, select the addition operation. Store the output of the adder circuit into register R1. After addition of R2 and R3, we have to bring it back to R1. Or we can say that add R1, R2, then R1 and R2 contents must be added and the result must come to R1. Or we can, if uh, three operand instruction it is, then add R1, R2, R3, then R2 and R3 can be added together and the contents of R2 and R3 can be added together and the result will come to R3. When the instruction is fetched to memory, the operation decoded in the control unit and control signals are issued. What is that? I have already discussed that the add R1, R2, is an instruction and that is lying in the memory, that is loaded into memory. How it can be loaded? Memory knows only zeros and ones. So what we are uh, today learning is the assembly language. And add R1, R2 is an assembly language instruction. And this instruction, the assembler, assembler is a software which which converts, which, which uh, translates this into machine code. Machine codes are in zeros and ones. And after this is uh, this is uh, translated, it is stored in the memory. It is not, not uh, like add R1, R2 as such is uh, stored in the memory. It cannot hold like that. It has to convert into, translate it into machine code, and then only we can uh, store it in the memory. So, the instruction is fetched from the memory. How it is fetched from zeros and ones? That is, means that its code is fetched from the memory and decoded in the control unit. That means the instruction is now available in the microprocessor or the processor. The processor has to decode it. Why to decode it? Understand what type of understanding what type of instruction it is. So the CPU understands it is the add operation. And then only it can generate what? The appropriate control signals in a sequence. Now let us see what is inside the memory. The processor only has direct access to the primary memory. For interfacing with the primary memory, two special purpose registers are used. I have already discussed that ALU contains registers. Some of them are 
general purpose and some of them are special purpose. Let us discuss now more about special purpose registers. Special purpose system has got a purpose. We cannot change that. The one of the special purpose registers is memory address register, MAR, holds the address of memory location to be accessed. What is that? Now, we know 4 bit uh, hexadecimal to binary conversion. 4 bit equivalent is converted. For example, if 4CH is hexadecimal value, its, it's uh, equivalent value is 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0 binary. That means 4 is 4 bit equivalent, Z is 4 bit equivalent. So that is how we are converting from hexadecimal to binary. Memory address register, only zeros and only ones we can put data in either microprocessor or in memory. So memory address register, if it is a 16 bit address, that means address means, as I have discussed really, it is the, it specifies, it specifies the location. That means, Memory is considered as linear array of storage locations. It means memory is considered as linear array of storage location. Each storage location has an unique address. So this address normally is specified in hexadecimal. Suppose the address start from 0, then 1, 2, 3, 4, up to 1024 location, 1000, yeah, 1024 altogether locations are there. Since it is starting from 0, we can only provide up to 1023 locations. So when we convert this by this is this is decimal value 1023 is decimal when we convert it into binary we will get a binary uh, I mean, uh, hexadecimal we have, binary we will get a value so that is 2 raised to 10 so 10 bits are required 2 raised to 10 is 1024 so 10 bits are required for addressing the memory so so suppose the memory contains 1024 locations. The address of each location, microprocessor has to issue or it has to send to the memory so that address hits the memory and the microprocessor also sends a read signal. So the data is released from memory to microprocessor. Now, we will see how the memory is organized. Often memory is organized byte organized, byte, byte organized means a particular memory location can contain maximum of eight bits. So a particular memory location contains maximum of eight bits and that location is given a unique address. What is that address? Say it is 1023, last location. So the 1023 is the location is converted into binary. So 10 ones will come. So that address now held by my memory address is holds the address, address of the memory location that is to be fed. And it is sent to <coughs> now memory release the contents of 1023. Let that be an instruction that reach memory data register. That's why it is written, holds the data that is being written into memory. 
So the instruction is now available in the memory data register. Or receive the data that is, it can be a data also. Need not be the, always need not be the, uh, what uh, instruction, it can be data also, but the memory can, memory can load data also. Now, the program means sequence of instructions or a group of instructions written for a particular, to execute a particular task. Once we fetch one instruction, the nearby instruction should also be fetched. So that there must be a counter which counts up to keep track of the memory. That means, suppose 1000 is the memory location, we have fetched from 1000 memory location, we have fetched the data. Now it has to grow up or count up to 1001 to fetch the next data, the next instruction. Like that group of instruction when uh, combined are called a program. Each and every instruction has to be fetched by the memory. I mean by the CPU. So there must be a counter to follow this. And this is called a program counter. Program counter holds the memory address of the next instruction to be executed. Now, 1000 inside 1000 or whatever uh, held by 1000 is being read by the microprocessor. Now, 1001 should be pointed out. That is done by program counter. Now what is instruction register? Temporarily holds an instruction that has to be fetched from memory. That means for memory data register now holds what? The instruction that is fetched from the memory. From a memory data register, it should go to instruction register. That's all. Bus architecture. The different functional modules must be connected in an organized manner to form an operational system. That means there is, uh, there is what um, uh, my processor is there, memory is there, input unit is there, output unit is there. All should be interconnected through a set of a group of lines that is connecting paths. That is called a bus. Bus is just like wires. Memory is the most important subsystem of a computer role that detects the overall performance. Memory is of, uh, considered as array of storage locations with each location has a unique address. Memory is often byte organized that I have already raised. One particular memory can hold a maximum of eight and that location has got an address. Means story, uh, the storage location can hold a maximum of eight bits. Assemblies, translate assembly language program into machine language. What we are uh, looking into right now is the assembly language. Assembly language means to write an assembly language, we require the study of the architecture of particular system. But uh, for high level language like C, C++, Java, etc., we need not know about the architecture of the inside what the registers are not, how memory is all made. Like that we need not know. But the, the trans that is high level language. That is more friendly to human beings, uh, friendly and more compatible with the human language. That is the compiler, trans compiler is the software, assembler is the software. Compiler translates high level language to machine language. Now we will see the instruction set architecture. So we, we, we know that there are different ways in which the operands can be specified. What is opcode and what is operand? Opcode means add R1, R2. 
and is mnemonic or it all together we can call it as an instruction and exactly if you're telling the telling and aron kumar can we can call it as operands the operands are r1 and r2 it can be source or destination here r2 is the source and r1 is the destination so let us now see instruction set architecture instruction set architecture serves an interface between software and hardware also it consists of instruction sets that means for a particular machine we have a particular set of instructions so what how the evolution of instruction set happened first it was accumulator based 1960s two it is stack based 1960 to 70 three it memory to memory based 1970 to 80 four it is 90 registered to memory based 1970 to present registered to register based 1960 to present now let us go deep into what happens uh, in uh, accumulator based suppose we have an instruction add x it is an one operand only one operand is there what is that is i x add x means x represents a memory location so the content of memory location say it is 0 7 is added with what accumulator accumulator is inside the processor and let that accumulator contain 0 2 then this 0 7 will be added to 0 2 and the result is brought back in the accumulator that's what is meant by one operand address and it is accumulator based now what is stack based suppose we are writing only add then what will happen we know there is stack what is stack suppose we are writing a large program a big a large program we are writing we have only maximum of 32 registers inside the cpu so some of the contents of registers we have to save somewhere for future use in the program so for that we are reserving some part of the memory to hold the data that is available in registers we can we can push the contents of register say r3 to memory in the stack then in future if we want the content of r3 we can pop it back we can, we can retrieve it so for that we are reserving some area in the memory and that's called stack so the stack let the stack be filled from bottom to um, bottom upwards stack um, normally it grows down grows down means when we fill the stack when we save the contents into stack it grows down 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 that's a memory content of the stack will be grows down so let uh, let the uh, let the stack is filled and once that at the top top level where it is where it is still filled is called the top of the stack so once we say add whatever contents of the top of the stack and whatever it is just below that will be added together and the result is stored back in that just below area, below location so that is uh, what is called stack based addressing mode or stack based machine now what is memory memory based memory memory based means we are adding two contents from the memory that the contents are uh, let us say add x y x is a memory location y is then another memory location and those contents are added and it may be written somewhere else in the memory itself we can say add x y z 
So the Y and the Z will be, contents will be added together and it is written back to X. So that's what is memory, memory based. But the fourth one is register memory based. That means register contents are added with the memory contents and the result is either stored in a register. Well, normally it is stored in register. Register, register based what? Move, uh, add R1, R2, R3. The only the contents are the operands are in registers. So there are two contents and R3 contents are added together and the result is stored back in R1. So that is register, register based machine. Now instruction format and addressing modes. Instruction format means there is an opcode location and an operand location for an ARM CPU. Normally we have got 32 bit registers and the memory is organized. Memory is um, uh, organized eight by 20, but the instruction are fetched by 32. That is called memory um, interleaving and all. So that uh, a in four locations, eight, 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 four locations can be all together brought to CP for execution. So in the instruction, so there is opcode and opcode. There is, uh, if we suppose we are writing add hash 25, that means the operand is nowhere in the registers or in the memory. It is directly specified in the instruction itself. Hash 25 is a data that is added to accumulate. That is what you mean by add hash to. Suppose the next instruction is add R1, R2, add ADD, I, add immediate R1, R2, 25. Here 25 is added with R2, contents of R2, and the result is stored back in R1. Now relative indirect addressing means, indirect addressing means, A memory will be specified in the instruction. Say 1024 is the memory. And that memory location holds the address of another memory location. And inside that memory location, the operand will be available. Inside that, inside that, there will be an that is indirect address. And what is relative addressing? Suppose we are specifying a, a, an address in the uh, instruction, in the what, in the, yeah, in the instruction. That instruction, that, 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 that will be an offset. Offset means that is to be added to the program counter. Program counter contains what? The, it points to the next location, uh, the next location where instruction is available. So that will be added to program counter and, the, um, and there you will get the effective address. In that effective address, you will have the data or the operand. Indexed addressing mode means there will be uh, a register. Inside that register, there will be a memory and it will be added with the offset and uh, the result uh, uh, there will be, we will get the effective address, and from that effective address, we can take out the data. That is all we have. I have to uh, discuss, tell you about this lesson. If you have any doubts, you can come through our brand pro. I'm glad to clear all the doubts. Thank you very much.